Next, we'll have the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance by the Honorable Joyce Dickerson. Let us stand. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Recently, Father, our community and our state suffered massive floods and, you know, it destroyed a lot of lives, homes, and the quality of life for many of our residents. We pray that you will be with them and guide them and keep them and help us to keep them in the highest priority as we go through the holiday season. Father, as members of this council who are responsible to address the many issues daily we face, we ask that you would grant us the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding in order to carry out the duties of this council for the residents of this, um, this um, county. I am grateful that you plan your plans for us as members of this council is to represent to people that we are elected to serve. We understand that your plans are good and that we trust in your steadfast and your faithfulness to help us make the best decisions. We pray that you will help each of us as members of this council be open to the concerns of the residents and that we understand that we have a truly awesome responsibility and we pray your blessings that you will give us the leadership, the guidance, and the understanding to carry out and to exercise these duties. These and other blessings we ask in your holy name. Thank you, amen. amen. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dickerson. You're welcome. Next, we have presentations, outstanding friend accomplishment. Um, I'll recognize the Honorable Julianne Dixon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On that note, I'm going to recognize Mr. Rodney Odom from the Department of Transportation. And Ms. Jennifer? Jennifer Sat from Lower, Low Country, Safe Route to School. <coughs> oh, okay, I gotta go back. Dear Richland County Government, on behalf of South Carolina Safe Routes to School Resource Center and the Safe Routes to School Program and supporters and all 400 partners throughout the state, we want to thank Ms. Councilwoman Dixon for being a friend of the South Carolina Safe Routes to School Resource Center. Thank you for your involvement in the Safety Walk Assessments, International Walk to School Day, and South Carolina Walk to School Day. In addition, we are honored that Richland County has acknowledged the first Wednesday in March as well as South Carolina Walk to School Day. Furthermore, Councilwoman Dixon, your dedication to South Carolina Safe Routes to School program has allowed us to host the first South Carolina Safe Routes to School forum in Richland County. Your support and dedication to the Resource Center and the Safe Routes here has been a positive effect on our community partners, schools, as well as Safe Routes to School program as a whole. We value your partnership and look forward to continually working together. Please accept this certificate of appreciation as our expression of gratitude. So we would like to recognize Richland County of Government as well as Councilwoman Dixon for being a partner of the Safe Routes to School program. Thank you. Did you want to say a few words, Ms. Dickerson? Um, Ms. Dixon, I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> Mr. Odom, I want to um, thank the Safe Route to School as well as um, yourself for your continuous support on helping me get in Richland County involved. Now, with that said, does that mean I'm still not qualified to come and ask for more money? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. 
All right. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. We know this issue was very near and dear to you, so congratulations on that award. Next, we have the approval of the minutes. Regular session, December 1st, 2015. Chair, entertain a motion. Move approval. Got a motion for approval. Second. It's been properly <laughs> second. Any discussion? All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. <clears throat> Next, we have the adoption of the agenda. Mr. Chair, second. Uh, Chair, entertain a motion. Uh, it's been moved and properly second. Discussion? Ms. Dickerson, you had? I thought you had something. Okay. Any changes? No changes, Mr. Chairman. All right. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Mr. Pierce. We, we are having a special call meeting next week. Thank We have a special call meeting next week. We haven't uh, scheduled, one. scheduled one at this point, Mr. Pierce. Okay, so time-sensitive items, if, if they're not taken up tonight, anything that's time-sensitive then would be held over until February. So February. I, I, yes, I, I would suggest that if there are time-sensitive items that you don't or, or are not comfortable with approving tonight that we do call a special meeting next week because you'll be here anyway for the committee meetings and the yeah. zoning public hearing. So I would recommend that if, again, there are items that are, are not approved tonight that have some time sensitivity that you do schedule a special call meeting for next Tuesday. Just a good question about that. To meet for your requirements, how soon do we need to call that special call meeting? Uh, you, you you would have until 24 hours prior to the meeting to, to make the call. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Okay. Well, I, I, you still I, have the floor. I, the floor. I, I got you. Sorry. I got you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Pierce, you still have the floor. I have you down, Mr. Diggers. Uh, okay. So at what point tonight are we going to determine that? We're going to go through and see. I, and yeah. If we run into an item, yeah. we will then. I think we put out an announcement. Yeah. Yes, or, or you could wait until you complete the agenda before you adjourn you again at, at that point. Fine. Yes. Yeah. All right, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Ms. Dickerson. That's fine. You answer my question. Okay. The motion on the table, uh, we still have discussion. The motion on the table is adoption of the agenda. Any more discussion? All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Next, we have the report of the attorney for executive session items, Mr. Smith. Mr. Chairman and members of council, uh, there are several items that we have that qualify for executive session. Uh, 7A, which is uh, the water park contracts. Uh, Sheriff's Department, that's the purchase of uh, property. That's a contractual matter. Transportation sales tax expenditures, that's the receipt of legal advice. Project RS, economic development, and under the uh, chairman's report, light item 11B, personnel matter. That completes my report, Mr. Thank chairman. you, Mr. Smith. Next, we have citizens' input for items on the agenda not requiring a public hearing. No one signed up to speak. No one signed up to speak. That, um, that's closed. Next, we have the report of the county administrator. Someone later is pointing at you. I know. Oh. That. I'm, just, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm late, but I wanted to know where do I, sign, do I need to sign in if I have an issue that I would like to be addressed? What is the issue? Um, Which issue? Issue uh, number three. Issue number three. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Issue number three. Okay. Thank you. 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 And for that citizen's input, that's at the end of the meeting, but you can sign up. Okay. <clears throat> Next, we have the report of the county administrator. Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of council. Uh, just one item for me uh, tonight under my report, that is the annual audit presentation. You should have in front of you the audit uh, final document. Uh, hopefully that uh, is at your desk. Uh, Tom McNeish, who is with Elliott Davis, uh, Tom is a partner with Elliott Davis um, and ha uh, headed up our audit for this year, uh, is going to give you just a brief overview of the final report. And as always, if there are questions that you would like to 
uh, to to go into further or, or issues that you would want to discuss at further length, we can set up a follow-up work session like we've done uh, in past years to have uh, Mr. McNeish come back and again give a more in-depth review of the audit. Okay. Tom. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, want to start off by, uh, as always, thanking the- Could you just state your name and company again? Sure. Uh, Tom McNeish, Elliot Davis DeCosmo. I uh, want to thank finance for, for helping us uh, get the, the work done. Um, one thing a little bit different, uh, very positive. I, I think we're, I'm, I'm in front of you earlier than I have been uh, in the past. Uh, that's been driven by the fact that the, the audit process got done a lot quicker. I think uh, administration and finance set an internal goal of, of getting things wrapped up completely. That's signed, sealed, and delivered before Thanksgiving. Uh, they were able to do that. That's that's important for a number of reasons. Um, certainly the, the expediency and, and, and getting it in front of y'all as the governing body, but also it's indicative, it's, it's indication to us that uh, the, the processes and procedures throughout the year uh, the monthly closing process that really enable your finance team uh, to close at year end quicker so that we can come in and audit the books, that's continually improving. And I think that's, uh, again, indicated by the fact that uh, we're, we're talking about the audit uh, before Christmas versus in, in, in January or February. So uh, my assumption is is that uh, as, as the county, as an administration, y'all will continue to to strive to, uh, to, to maintain that and, and uh, improve the procedures and, and, and shorten the, the audit period even, even further. Uh, that said, uh, we did issue an, an unmodified uh, opinion on the financial statements on the, the comprehensive annual financial report. Uh, and that is, as y'all know, to say that based on our audit testing, uh, we were able to give a third party opinion that the financial statements were uh, fairly stated in accordance with uh, all the, the applicable uh, requirements. So uh, that, as you know, is what you want to have. That's a clean opinion on the financial statements. Uh, that's important to the primary users of the, the statements in, in addition to yourselves, your rating agencies, and your granting agencies. Uh, as a separate procedure, as a separate audit, uh, because the, the county uh, brings in significant dollars in terms of federal grants uh, to, to meet program uh, requirements and in, in your, your mission as a, a local government. Uh, we are also required to perform what's called a single audit in accordance with the Single Audit Act. And what we're looking for there is to determine that there's been proper compliance uh, with those federal uh, regulations and those compliance requirements. Uh, that's going to be very important to your granting agencies, the ones that remit those dollars. They want to make sure that they're being spent in accordance with the respective uh, program compliance requirements uh, that are that are speculated or specified within the, the grant agreements and within uh, the office management and budget uh, circulars that, that uh, provide the framework for those those rules and regulations. So uh, the good news there is we did not find any instances of material noncompliance that would result in uh, a, a circumstance where we would uh, not be able to, to provide a, a, an unmodified report. Um, so that is uh, something that uh, going forward, there has to be vigilance to make sure that those compliance requirements are continue to be maintained. The the. The alternative is, is potential oversight audit by a granting agency to where they'd come in and uh, essentially be, perform their own procedures and then make a determination that they'd want uh, federal expenditures refunded to them. So uh, that's why those, those compliance requirements are important and why the results of the single audit are important. Um, lastly, uh, as far as accounting policies and procedures uh, and, and reporting requirements, uh, as we've talked about in the past, uh, there was a new pension standard that your finance, uh, your finance team implemented. Um, that same standard was implemented for local government similar to the county uh, across the country, uh, and that essentially resulted in uh, a pension liability that was formerly on the state level uh, being pro rata apportioned to the respective local governments. So you'll see that in, in your statement of net position. Uh, it was a significant, significant dollar amount, approximately $148 million. 
Uh, but again, that's, that's based on the fact that this is a uh, retirement plan that is not administered on the county level. It's administered by the state. So in order for that, uh, that liability to be managed and to hopefully uh, reduce in future years. It's up to uh, the decisions that are made on the legislative level, uh, also how the market cooperates in terms of the investments that fund that plan. So I just wanted to call your attention to the fact that uh, that standard was implemented and that liability will, will be there going forward. It'll fluctuate. Um, but. All counties in South Carolina and again across the country, all government entities that are in a cost sharing plan like the county is, are subject to that same liability. Um, with that, uh, I can take any questions that y'all might have on the audit process. And then I'm going to make a motion. Okay. Just still works this. Yeah. All right. Uh, Chair and team, Mr. Pierce and Mr. Manning. Just one question tonight, and then I'm going to make a motion about a work session. But uh, could you um, direct me to the fund balance? Yes, sir. That's going to be on page 19. Right. Could you share that number with me? Yes, sir. So the, and of course, as you know, there's going to be several components of it, but the unencumbered portion. The unassigned or unencumbered portion is uh, 30.3 million. Which is an improvement. Uh, so that would have been an improvement. Overall fund balance increased by $2.8 million. Very good, very good. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we um, schedule a work session for those people who are interested in February to discuss further details of the audit. Okay, that's a motion on the table. It's been, when do you want to have it? February? Well, it'll be February, yeah, okay. after the... After mm -hmm. the uh, that's the motion on the table. It's been properly second discussion. Mr. Manning. Um, yes, sir. For a variety of reasons, that just seemed like foreign language. Are we in pretty good shape? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Any more discussion? All in favor of that motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Mr. McDonald. That completes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Next, we have the report of the Clerk of Council, Ms. McDaniel. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of council. Uh, first, want to remind you about our board commission and committee appreciation drop-in. This is an item we talked about at the past council retreat um, to appreciate those that have served on behalf of Richland County. So that'll be on January 14th here at the administration building. Uh, we have um, provided invitations to those board members and our liaison, so we would ask for full council participation. Um, also, we have... Mr. Yes. Malinowski. I'm sorry, it's from 5.30 to 7.30, and it is on the council calendar. Um, the next item, uh, we received a request from Benedict's College 29th Annual Black History Teleconference. They are asking for council's uh, support and uh, financial support this year. That ranges um, from 500 to 5,000 if council would choose to collectively give them something or from your individual discretionary funds. Um, and if How much are tickets, do you know? Uh, $50. All right. uh, so council's welcome to take action if they so choose. What's the committee recommendation? Mr. Jeter. I'll make a motion that uh, the individual Come council on, members please. pay for uh, tickets out of administration. Yeah. 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 yeah, the motion has been properly second. Discussion. All in favor of that motion? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Malinowski. There's no date out here for that. This will take place, I apologize. Um, February 9th and 10th, sir. Thank you. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Next we have, I'm sorry, Ms. McDaniels. Uh, that concludes your report, sir. Thank you, Ms. McDaniels. Next we have the report of the chairman. I do have two items. One is the personnel that we'll take up in executive session. The other is the charters of freedom. Um, uh, Ms. Anchetta, do you want to speak to that? If you can just state your name and title. 
please. Uh, Assistant County Administrator. Uh, this item is back before you tonight with a recommendation um, for the monuments to be placed at 2020 Hampton Street out front. Uh, this was our original recommendation. Um, the last time this was brought to council, uh, you recommended that we look at Hamilton Owens and Mr. Patterson, his staff and county staff visited that site as well as the Decker site. And they again concluded that the site out front here um, best meets the goals of the monument. Chairman, I move for approval. Second. Got a motion for approval. It's been properly second. Discussion? All in favor of that motion signify by raising your hand. In favor, Dixon, Malinowski, Rose, Jackson, Pierce, Rush, Livingston, Dickerson, Washington, Manning, Jeter. Any opposed? Like sign? That motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Sanchetta. That concludes my report. Next, we have open and closing of public hearing. Um, item 12A is Palmetto Health Jetta Bond Insurance. Um, no one signed up to speak. That, that public hearing is open. No one signed up to speak. That public hearing is now closed. Item 12B, authorizing. I'm sorry. No, not that I'm aware of. Which? Oh, come on. I wouldn't wear it here. Did someone? Did you invite outside council? For the personnel item? I didn't. Mr. Washington. Mr. Chair, I contacted Mr. Bettis because of the personnel action we have on our agenda. Um, so we do have outside counsel. Do we? Motion to go into executive session. Thank you, Mr. Jeter. Yeah, got a motion. It's been properly seconded to go into executive session. You want to, to take up the person? Huh? No, let me take up personnel item. Let me just take this up. We, yeah, we'll this. We'll come back to it. Clarification. Okay, we're in the middle of public hearing, so you need to close. Any, any, any no, I, I've. We can we, come back to it. Though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just point of order, Mr. Smith. Uh, although we were down the the agenda, we're in public hearing. Can I just? Can we just stop at this point to go into executive session? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. There's a motion on the table. It's been properly seconded to go into executive session. For the purpose of, for the purpose of a personnel item. And we do have outside counsel. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Go in the executive session.